<clears throat> so a lot of us, when we think about the resources in our businesses, we think about the things that we need as the basics. For example, we need uh, a premises, uh, we need tools, um, we need skills and training, and perhaps we need staff. But I wonder how many people think about um, the environment as being a resource in their business and how important it is um, for the success of the business and people's productivity and mental health. So I thought we would, instead of doing a proper talk today, I thought we'd play a little game and see um, how many people can get uh, the prizes, Let's see who wins this little quiz. It's all about biophilia. So let's start our quiz. Start with a nice, easy question. Do any of you follow my social media feeds for one point? A for yes and B for no. If you just grab a little piece of paper and you can write your your A's and B's and C's down. Endless plug. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a fire alarm going off, smoke alarm, oh. it's burnt his toast. <laughs> Sean, you haven't got a not yet option. Not yet? Well, that, that's a half a point, so you can put C on that one for half a point. Right. <laughs> so, Question number two, which paint color is reportedly the most stressful in office spaces for two points? So your options are gray, red, or brown. Question three, presenteeism costs the UK, costs UK businesses for five points, 500 million pounds a year, B, 1.7 billion pounds per year, or C, 3.26 billion pounds per year. All of our HR people should get this one right. Oh, no pressure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get it wrong, Nikki. Okay, I know. I'm like, like, ooh, I, like, I knew this yesterday. Uh -huh. <laughs> what is presenteeism? Yeah, so present, presenteeism is when you have people that are ill but they turn up for work anyway, and then are about as useful as a second-hand chocolate kettle. Ah. Where they, they, so they turn up to work, they receive their full day's wages because they've actually turned up, but they don't actually produce what they would normally do as, as, as a healthy person. Yeah. And, and it's in like fact, sleepwalking through your day at work. Yeah. Right. Question, num next question. Access to... Access to natural light is a number one requested biophilic feature. And actually in all the requests, it makes up to 44% of all the requests. What is third for two points? A quiet working space, plants, or bright colors? Now there's a bonus point for this one, two bonus points for the person that can guess the closest percentage. So, which is the third most requested and what percentage? Next question. Which of these plants absorbs the largest volume of VOCs? So, VOCs are volatile organic compounds like carbon dioxide. This is a three-point question. So, the first one is spider plant. Second one, dwarf jade plant. In South Africa, this one is called speck boom. And then the third one is an elephant ear plant. These are those huge, huge, huge ones where the leaves are sort of four foot long. Right, one point question. Biophilic design can't be used in all workspaces, such as lab laboratories, surgical theatres and kitchens, generally places that are considered sterile. A or B, true or false. Oh. Right, which one of these items could be considered a biophilic element for five points? So A is a bunch of stones painted to look like little hamsters. B is cork wall cladding that's been cut to make these wonderful three-dimensional star shapes. C is a Fibonacci function, and D is green light. Mm. 
we got a we got a picture of Pascal while we go through the answers of this one, and let's see how many points everybody gets. So, one point for yes or no. So everybody should be getting yes. If you don't, then you've not you've missed out on a bonus point. Right. Question number two for two points. Grey is the most stressful colour. It's actually oh. the only colour that has that has presented um, responses from people that their stress levels have gone up. So if you have a building that's painted grey, please, please do something about it quickly because it's not doing anyone any good. <clears throat> right. Presenteeism is number B or letter B. Number One B. <laughs> number B. <laughs> too early in the morning. 1.7 billion pounds per year. That's an astronomical number for people just going in like zombies every day. So our third most requested feature is acquired working space. And the percentage is 19%. Oh, can I have oh, a wow. point for 20? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 no, because on this on this platform it's too difficult for me to, to validate. Okay. So so we'll get uh, it's gotta be a whole the whole percentage. No worries. <laughs> I did sound Love a quiz. <laughs> So, so who who else had twenty? Is there anyone else? I had eighteen. I had nineteen. Oh, oh yes, I know. <laughs> if we had a nineteen, then that person who was that? It sounded Maybe. like a Mark. Mark. Well we done. Mark. So Mark's the winner. Dead on. <laughs> You've been doing your reading, Mark. <laughs> no, it's just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> you could have start that out, man. <clears throat> no. For this one, the answer is B. The dwarf jade plants. Oh. Really? Yeah. yeah, so many of you probably guessed the spider plant because it grows really quickly and it's in everybody's homes and places and it's advertised as being something really great. Yeah. But actually the spider plant is almost useless at, at cleaning any air. Um, the dwarf jade plant, however, can, con can absorb 15.4 tonnes of carbon dioxide per hectare Per year, so one hectare of that plant can absorb fifteen point four tons of carbon dioxide every year, it, and you can eat it. So there are places you can have biophilic design elements. So the answer is A for that one. You don't have to have plants and animals and things that are not sterile in a space. You can have things that are in glass you can have things that are painted you can have things that are tiles that have natural designs and things on them so it doesn't matter what space you have you can always introduce biophilic design into that area so isn't that b then sean sorry yes b okay. yay that's right there we go right and the final question which of these items could be considered biophilic elements well actually all of them are so everybody should get at least five points in this quiz. The one that's probably the most strange to look at is, is C, the Fibonacci function. But if you think about snail shells, they have that shape. And a lot of flowers have that shape. And what we're aiming for is for, to, to trick our minds to thinking that there's natural elements around us. And that snail, that, that spiral shape is very, very pleasing to our minds. So consider the shape of things when you are looking at designing furniture or putting decorations into your, into your workspace because even that can make a positive impact on you. So points-wise, how many points has everybody got? I'll absent myself from this because I've... I've, I've got, I've I've got 14, whether that's good or bad. 14? That's not bad. Anyone, good. anyone top 14? 16. 16, well done, it's you. Well done. So, I'm just trying to get back to Zoom so I can see everybody's faces, but I'm not succeeding very well. Broadcast. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, we got 16. Who had 16? I think that's our winner for today. Ashish. Oh, Ashish. Yay, Ashish, you get the bragging rights. Congratulations. <laughs> so I hope you learned a little bit from that little quick quiz. Um, 
you know, some of the things might, might not make any sense if, if you have questions or you are interested in finding out more about how biophilic design can help you, please give me a shout and we can have a chat and we can see what we can do to help. So that's me, all done. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, with the dwarf jade plant, yes. you said it absorbs the most CO2. Yeah. But what about the oxygen? Because the whole idea of plant life, it pulls CO2 in and it gives oxygen out. Is it also the same for oxygen? So, so the rate of oxygen that it releases is very similar to, to, to a lot of other succulents. Um, but with that plant, it's actually, it actually comes from a category of plants called CAM plants. And they are normally succulents. And the way that they go about life, because they live in very dry environments, is during the cooler parts of the day, they absorb carbon dioxide and they store it in the, the flesh. And, and then to prevent um, them drying up, they close all their stomatophores so that during the day when they're photosynthesizing, they're not losing moisture. And so they release the, the oxygen, but they store a lot more carbon dioxide than other plants would normally um, respirate. Thank you. Uh, can I can I show a quick example of um, sort of a little biophilic piece that Sean did for me? So on one side, it's just a normal stone, and on the other, he actually carved one of the leopard geckos in. Oh wow! That was um, that was my birthday present for last year, and he sits on wow. my desk. And that's just a, another little example of some biophilic design that you can have. Oh. So Wendy has got some really good biophilic elements in her office over her shoulder. She's got that aquarium and I see Catherine's got a, a Boston fern over her shoulder, which is helping her out. And in fact, is, even is that down what at, it is? Uh, it looks like it, yeah. <laughs> and Dan O'Connor's got the tree of life behind me. So well, even Dan Sean, I'd just like to say, Sean, yes, I'd yes. just like to say I've learnt um, three new words today. Okay. Um, presenteeism and <laughs> biophilic. So thank yeah, you very too. much for that. That's and right. Trudy's got little regards... cat time. <laughs> Sorry. Hey. And in, in regards to grey, um, I think that's really interesting what you said because I used to work at Booker Cash and Carry Head Office in Wellingborough and they mm. painted their whole building inside Battleship Grey. Um, and the, the, the big um, craze in the past sort of year or two with decorating rental properties because i've got a couple of rental properties is that the craze was decorating it in gray with um splashes of yellow around i'm mm. sure we've all seen the the interior design photos and things so for gray to be quite a, a color that is not um conducive to calmness and things that really surprises me so mm -hmm. um so yeah thank you for sharing that that's fascinating stuff thank you that's okay the actual Actually, the best color is to, to... sorry sorry Sean. gary gary carry on yeah, uh, many, many years ago, when I trained to be a psychotherapist, we used what was called the Max Lucia colour chart, which we do with mm. every client when they came in. Black or grey with uh, yellow was often uh, an indicator that the person might have suicidal thoughts. Mm. And uh, so if anyone's oh. interested in checking out the Lucia colour, I don't know if you can still get that, but... Uh... Yeah, it's, That's it's quite best. alarming, because my old school uniform was grey and yellow. <laughs> 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 It was yes, boarding the school. <laughs> so, so the best colours to use are, are colours that you would find out if you if you went for a walk in the woods. What colours would you likely see? And mm. if you use those colours as your your accent colours, so you could have white walls with then your accented natural colours. Those are normally the best ways of going about things. And it, it, if you if you mimic nature as close as you can with colours, then you you're likely to to be winning. So a light light very light blue ceiling and and wood floors you know that's a great way of mimicking the outdoor world fantastic Ooh. well i think we've all really learned something there this morning haven't we yeah, everybody's faces all like... <laughs> 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 fantastic. yeah no that's amazing thank you sean